Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Neuroff Guru. I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Drew Carey. Hi, Drew. Hey, Andy. And today we're going to be asking a question, should routine complete blood counts, CBCs, and electrolytes be performed as part of the initial diagnostic workup for idiopathic intracranial hypertension, IIH? And maybe, Drew, you could just explain why this is even a question. Yeah, so the, the question comes in because we don't have definitive evidence for one versus the other. Um, I think each doctor has their own uh, method that they use for initial evaluation for patients coming in for papilledema and, and presumed IIH. Um, but we don't have consensus guidelines. Uh, it's not a question that's been evaluated by a randomized control trial. And some of it's dictated by the doctor, some of it's dictated by the, the patient's symptoms. And so the purpose of this article, I think, was to examine the evidence for or against to help people kind of make that decision for themselves. And why would a CBC even be helpful? Well, certainly the most common patients we see who have IAH or typical IAH, right? They're, they're young, relatively healthy women is what the literature has, has traditionally shown who are in the fertile age and, and they tend to be obese. We, you know, we've learned more recently that there's, you know, increased risk of metabolic disorders, uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol, even heart disease in these young women that we, we weren't really aware of before. Um, and young women uh, have, have periods and they have blood loss as part of that. And very, very many of them may have mild anemia. And there's been some suggestion in case reports, case control studies, that having severe anemia may be a risk factor for developing papilledema or poor vision outcomes. Um, and so the question becomes, you know, how much is it incidental, you know, or how much of it really impacts vision? And is it a common thing that we need to check everybody for? And how about the electrolytes? Electrolytes have not really been associated at baseline with having IIH, but a number of the treatments that we use for patients who need treatment um, can cause electrolyte abnormalities. Uh, cetazolamide uh, is is our only treatment with level one uh, level or class class one evidence from a randomized control trial, and we do know in patients that can cause potassium abnormalities. It does have a weak diuretic impact. Certainly causes metabolic acidosis as it makes pa patients uh, excrete bicarbonate in their urine. Um, uh, topiramate less less so, um, and then our additional agent furosemide Lasix loop diuretic can certainly lead to dehydration, hypokalemia, prerenal uh, uh, prerenal renal insufficiency, or if, but in and if you have a baseline kidney disease, any of those medications may be higher risk um, in those patients and require further monitoring. And so, what was the argument? for and against from our colleagues and your, your colleague, in fact, uh, Dr. Henderson and Dr. Prospero Ponce. Yeah, so the main um, the main arguments uh, to, to consider getting a baseline CBC is, is that in some patients, iron deficiency anemia can cause or contribute to elevated intracranial pressure, and certainly in atypical cases, uh, slender patients, men, it may be a, a higher risk uh, condition. Um, treatment of anemia in some cases, if it's severe, may resolve the papilledema. Um, and the concomitant anemia may make vision loss more likely, and renal sufficiency can certainly complicate treatment or be a side effect of the treatments. And then the cons is that the evidence for anemia really probably is not so calm, not so strong in our typical patients. But if you're a man or non-obese, we definitely want to look for secondary factors. Uh, conflicting evidence for anemia is, is really from case control studies and not really stronger than that. And the thought was that probably we could individualize lab testing for individual patients and a thorough history could probably tell you who's at risk for having anemia and, and who's not. And the electrolyte monitoring really probably not needed at baseline, but if you are going to initiate pharmacotherapy, then it would be a reasonable time to get uh, electrolyte monitoring for patients. And so what are you doing for your practice at Hopkins? I think for most patients, because we're going to be getting uh, some baseline testing in, in these patients, um, you know, we I, I check all the patients who come in with papilledema for infectious things like Lyme or syphilis. And if I'm getting some blood work, I, I'm of the opinion, let's get the blood work we think we may need in the near future as opposed to, uh, you know, 
waiting and, and saying, well, we'll do some blood work this week and some blood work next week. So I usually get a BMP and a CBC as part of that baseline panel. But certainly in, in patients um, who you, you may not need it, uh, it's you know reasonable to consider wait, waiting on those. And, and I do like to have a CBC before they have a lumbar puncture. Um, you know, I, in the article, they discussed that it's a 0.01% chance of having thrombocytopenia, and you probably could detect that with a history. But um, if you're putting a needle in somebody's uh, lumbar spine, I, I'd like to know their bleeding risk is is very low. Yeah, so for us, we're in a very large system like yours, and we have EPIC, so almost everybody's already had a CBC and a, a electrolytes before they even come see me. And so we just look at those. I, I do take more caution when they're on hypertensive medicines, especially when they're on a diuretic. Those people we do check the electrolytes on, not only at the beginning, but also during the course, if especially I'm adding dimox and certainly if furosemide uh, is being added. But I think it is what you said. The take-home message is probably you got to decide for yourself and there's conflicting evidence, but at least know the issue exists. Yeah, I think the two patients I've run into issues or the two types of patients I've run into issues with, with diamox and their renal function is, as you said, the ones who are on a diuretic and those who are over age 50 because they may have some mild baseline renal impairment. Um, and, and so those are the patients I, I, I monitor the, the BMP a little bit more frequently when they're on medication. Well, that concludes yet another edition of the Neuropguru. Thank you so much, Dr. Kerry. We'll see you next week. Sounds good. Thanks, Andy.